morning everyone and welcome back to my channel. Um, I'm doing something a little bit different today. I'm going to use my computer and show you how I make some of my stamps. Um, so I'm using this program up here which is called GNU Image Manipulation Program or most people call it GIMP for short. It is very much like um, Photoshop except it's free, it's open source um, which is obviously how I like it. I wouldn't use an unlicensed copy of um, software anyway. So I'm starting off with an image. This image is one inch square. I know it looks quite large on here, that's so we can work with it. But when I come to cut out my images, I want them to be one inch square. So there's a blank image there. Um, it's, it's transparent at the moment. I'm going to add myself a new layer and I'm going to fill that layer with white and I'm going to put it underneath where we are for now. Um, and in fact I'm going to pick up that colour while I'm there and then this layer on top I'm going to fill in yellow because I'm making some yellow stamps or trying to make some yellow stamps and I'm going to add a filter and apply canvas and it will look like um, canvas paper. Right, so, oh I've just done that on the wrong thing, hang on a minute. It doesn't matter, let's, let's move the background underneath and fill the background with white then. I forgot to swap layers which is my usual um, thing. Right, so I've got a white image underneath and the yellow one on top and I'm just going to change the opacity of the top layer just a little, not much, just to knock off some of that harsh yellow and sort of blend it into the white below. Right, so next job, I want to add some flavour and colour to these things. So I'm trying to remember every time to put a new layer on top. That way if we don't like something we can just not look at it or we can try different things out. So I am going to change my colour to a brownie type colour and I am going to add on, let's add some script. So I need to use the paintbrush tool, I need to look for my, through all my brushes and I've got hundreds of them over here. Sometimes it's very hard to find one that that's music. I don't think I want music, I want text. Here we go. And I'm just looking for a text that I quite like the look of. That's got too many scribbles in. I mean you can use you can use whatever you like, that's quite good. Nope. Nope. I don't really want I don't need to be able to read it. A nice bit of maths there. Uh Let's try that one for want of something. Right, now you can see it's absolutely massive at the moment. I could cover the whole thing or I could knock the size down a bit, which is what I'll probably do. Is, let's see. I don't want too much. I think maybe have some down there. And maybe we'll change. Maybe we could have some music. Let's put another layer down. Or let's deal with the layer we've got so we don't get too confusing. So I'll go back to the layers and this layer is quite, it's still quite dark. Let's put a different tool on so I'm not, it's quite dark. So I'm just going to change the opacity again and just drop that down a bit and it will fade gradually into the background a bit. I still think that yellow might be a bit, oh it didn't, it didn't seem to, uh, change too much. Let's try, let's try that and then with this one I think that will do for that. Let's add in a different layer so we'll have a new layer and we will add in with the paintbrush a different we could have some music That will do. Right, that is huge. So I 
Let's pop that in there like that. So I'm going to go back to the layers. I'm just going to change the opacity a bit, make it blend in a little bit more because I don't want it to dominate. In fact, we shouldn't really see it at all. It'll just be there. We'll know it's there. Right, now I'm going to add another layer. And you could be sensible and um, label all these to so make things easier to find. I'm going to use the paintbrush again and I'm going to add some splats of colour. So something like that. Now those are massive splats. I mean look, we don't want something like that. That's because the brush size is huge. I could do that. Um, do I want them in brown? I don't think it really matters. I was going to put them in black, but I don't think it matters. Right, go back and we'll fade this down a bit as well because we don't want this to be particularly visible. It just needs to be there. There we go. Just to add something to it. Right, now we we'll get to the fun bit. Let's add another layer and we will add a B. So back to the paintbrush and on the paintbrush tools we've got right down the end here right down the bottom a B he's a bit too big um, should we have a big B let's have a big B on this one there he is and I'm going to rotate him a bit because I think I don't really want I mean I could keep him straight on like that or we could rotate him Let's rotate him because I've done it and just move him about a bit and the next thing I usually do on a stamp is oh I've done a new layer but actually I'm going to add some text and I think it will automatically do a new layer the price so let us have 45 pence if only stamps were that cheap. I'm going to make it a bit bigger because I don't think I've made them that big in the past. That, that'll do. 43 I've done there. And pop it there, I think. Right, one more thing. I'm going to add um, a new layer again. I'm changing back to brown. And I'm going to add a kind of faux inked border. So I'm going to select everything and I'm going to shrink my selection. And that's 20 pixels. I've done that by. And I'm going to feather that so that rounds it off a bit. So it's it being too harsh. So I now I've got this selection around here. I want to um, invert the selection. And fill that with the paintbrush tool with brown like that now let's deselect so that you can see what we've got we can leave it like that if if we're happy with that but i think it looks like i've overdone the vintage photo so again we will take some of that oops take it back a little bit What's that? Let's go down to 70, like that. So that's it really. That will do for one stamp. And um, so now I need to export it. So I need to export it as a PNG. I'm going to call it yellow B stamp. Um, I think I've already got some. I think I've already got one, but I'm going to call it 01. And it's a PNG and export that. Now the beauty of doing it this way is that you can click off the things that you don't want and keep the things that you do. So I could keep the background exactly the same, but I could click the B off, add a new layer and actually I could have kept the same B. Let's do, uh, let's do that instead of adding a layer and duplicate that layer. OK, and I'll turn one of the bees off. So now we've got a copy to work with. I'm going to scale that down. And 
Let's move him along. Like that. And we could duplicate him to make him look a bit... Um, I think I might do that anyway, but I'm going to duplicate him to give him a friend. Let's move his friend around up here. We could rotate his friend. And we'll duplicate his friend as well. Oops, I didn't save that. Hang on. Let's rotate it. No, it doesn't like that because it doesn't know what I'm on. Hang on, bear with me. I'm on the wrong layer, that's why. Let's try that. Let's rotate him like that. And move him. And we could add another B. Yeah, there's one there. Let's add him. Let us rotate him. Um, I don't know how we want him. Could be like that. And then we'll move him. Looks a little bit contrived, but... Um, him there. I might have to move them around a bit. Uh, this is why it's a good idea to name your layer so that you know what you've got. I think actually this one here I'm going to rotate to look like him facing that way. Oh, now they look like having a party. Right, I'm not going to worry about it. You get the idea. We've got some bees. And we could edit the price if we wanted to. And call this one. If we get on the right thing, we can just call it 5p. And then we could export this one. So we've got a completely new one. And we'll call it yellow bee stamp 02. Um, and actually, I'm just wondering, I think what I might do is duplicate that layer, duplicate that layer, and that one, and they stand out a bit more like that, and I'm going to save that as a new one, because I, I don't know which one I'll like best, so I'll export that one as... I might call it 2A. There we go. So we'll export that one. And I'm going to just do one more. So I'm going to click these bees off because I don't want these ones on here. Um, I'm going to add something that I've got. So we'll add it as a new layer. So paste as a new layer. Oh, I don't know what that is. That's not what I wanted at all. I want to open as a new layer. That would help. A hexagon. There we go. Right, so we could add some of this. Which is like a hexagon. Just... Let's do that. There we go. Quite like that. And let's have one more new layer. And we will add the B again. I think I will do a large B this time. So straight back on there. We've got the B, but I want him to be bigger. Maybe not quite that big. I was kind of going to put him on. I'm going to move that the numbers. Perhaps we'll just put him on like that. Go back and grab that 5P because we can't see it where it is. You can come at the top. And we'll edit it and make it another value. Uh, 
Um, Tempe. Oops. There we go. Just going to move that a tiny bit like that. I'm looking at the border and I'm thinking perhaps the border on this one is a little faint. So I'm just going to increase the opacity a little bit and I'm going to export this one. And we'll call this one Yellow Stamp 3. OK. Right, the next thing I would do is go to some program, or oh, I've already got some there, let's do a new one. Um, it's a, a drawing, mine is. But you can do it in a word processor. This is LibreOffice Draw. Again, this is a free um, program. And then I would insert my images. So I'll go and find them. Yellow B. I don't think I can do more than one, so I've got to do one at a time. So I'll just stick them in. One. Two. to A because then I can look at it and decide whether or not I want to get, I think I'll probably keep that one actually and the third image which is this one here uh, actually I think I prefer that one so I'm not going to keep that one so those are my images and we'll just help I'm just trying to line them up a bit not that it really matters right I'll line them up for the sake of printing so align their tops and we can distribute them as I've got an equal gap around them and you can then obviously do as many as you like so if indeed I did that come on um, I'm gonna be a bit wasteful but I'm just going to print those ones out and then I will be back Right, well hopefully my other video worked and um, these are what we've printed out I'll try and show you um, now if I were doing them for myself just purely for me I wouldn't have put the brown um, edge on I would just leave it and ink it myself and um, because I'll probably end up inking it anyway and um, they're not too bad you can see this you can see the um, music and the text in there you can see the honeycomb here um, yeah not displeased with those so I, only, I have only cut uh, I've only done nine of them obviously you could fill a page and do as many as you like and I could upload these individual um, PNG files and get my Cricut to cut them out but I'm not going to I'm going to use my trusty one inch punch it's just a matter of lining them up like that very very simple this next step So you can make, and the thing is, you can make as many as you like. So that video took about 18 minutes and we made three designs. Um, could easily have made, you know, once you once you get into the swing of it, you can just keep on um, making them. Could have put a bit of foliage in the background or something, whatever you like. And obviously you don't have to do bees. You, know, you could do black and white bees. You could change the colour. You could do whatever you fancy tidy up 
tiny bit of white on the top of that one, but it's not going to hurt. But I do need to get a little bit closer to this one, so let's put that in there. Now I could use my Cricut to make the stamp backgrounds or I could um, use the ones I've already got from uh, Samantha and Cadge, although I have used some of those already. Or I could cut them out myself, which is what I am going to do. Now, even, do you see what I mean? Even though these have got like their image, you can still see a little white down the side, which I'm personally not that keen on. So I'm just going to go around, which is why I don't tend to put the brown um, fake um inking around the outside for my personal use i guess if i was thinking of selling these anytime then you know it might be people would prefer it to come you know like ready ready inked but for me personally i prefer usually just to put my own on and i'm just using what's left on the end of my um sponge here from another project it's enough just to take the white edge off which is all I want I don't really like seeing it and I'm not going to stick it on a white background anyway so it, it's not actually going to be noticeable it's just me being me being me right that's those next we need this which I got from Tracy Susan which is just fractionally larger now I've got a really thick piece of card here I haven't tried it on that I don't even need to look it, look it up, I don't think. Anyway. Maybe I should do it on the table, as it was meant to do. Something like that. I'd get less bend if we're doing it that way. Sorry about the noise. Whoops, I've missed that one completely. Pay my attention. That's seven. There we go. I can go back in the scrap drawer. Let's cut that. I'm saving little scraps of white and black and things like that now because I'm using them for my um, Cricut just when I need a little thing. So I've got a drawer full of little scraps and things. Right, next job is to glue them on. Do you know what? I think I'm going to use a Pritt stick for this. I know I don't use them very often. And in fact, I'm going to use that little scrap there just to do that. I don't know which way up that goes. I think I'm going to stick it that way up. Not the stamp, the background I meant. Which... Yeah, sorry about my black nail, got ink on it, it won't come out. It's gone under the nail and it doesn't want to come off. I think I want it that way. But if I was making like 90 or whatever you get on a I don't know how many. I think Cad said you can get 48 on a um, cutting out on a Cricut. So if I was doing that many, I would use my Cricut to do this, not my punches. Because, um, you know, it's easy doing a punch, but not, not that easy if you're doing like a hundred of them. Right, so nearly there, she says. I'm not even halfway there, am I? Oh, I am halfway there. You know what I've got to do next when I've done this? I need to find my uh, little post cancellation stamp. 
and have a little stamp. Now I have got post cancellation um, stamps, like I've done the bees and things. I've got uh, those. I could have put them on the paper, but if you do that, it doesn't look like it's been stamped on afterwards, even if you put it on top because you don't get it on the white background. And then to me, it's you know, it's fine, it's great. I mean, I use them as background things. If I'm doing a big page of something, I might put them on, but they're not much use, I don't think. Just having them printed on there because it doesn't look like they've been added afterwards, it just looks like it's part of the design. But obviously, you do what you like if you're uh, into digital art and things. I didn't know that I'd be able to record my screen at all. Um, Michelle said it, something about, can you show us how you did it? Or, and I thought, well, no, oops. Oh, well, that's not gone very well. Uh, no, I can't because I don't know how to share my, I don't know how to do my, to video my screen, but I found out and it was ever so easy and it seems to have worked. So that is good. Right, I am going to throw that bit away now because it's gluey. Let's find the stamp. One of those two. And my ink pad. Oh, it's not there because I've moved them. That's the only problem from the um, clearing up and everything is I've put things in different places and now I don't know where they are. Right, I'm going to put these on here. And let's choose a post cancellation stamp. We've got Leon, which I tend to use. Paris there. These are a little bit bigger. That one I like, but it's a bit, probably a bit too big for this. Another Paris one, a little Paris one there. Maybe I'll use that one today. Let's just see how we're going. And that's just playing postmistress again, deciding where you want to put it, looking at the stamp and trying to get it so it goes on the white bit as well. So. Yet another lot of stamps. I mean, really, can you have too many stamps? No. What I do have a problem is storing them. So I think um, lovely Lynn Barkas sent me an email, which unfortunately I didn't see until um, about one o'clock this morning. Um, so I didn't obviously reply back then. Um, but she suggested an, um, like an ephemera folder and I think, oh, I might, might have a go at one of those. Then I can keep these and then just whip one out when I need one. There we go. So, that. Turn that over. That is how I create my digital art the backgrounds for my faux postage stamps. That's the whole process really. And then when I did the, uh, the other ones the other day with the little butterflies, I just printed out and cut out some tiny butterflies. But essentially, that is it. Anyway, it was a bit of a different video um, and uh, not planning on doing loads of those. Just thought I would share this one time and um, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up and um, let me know. So uh, have a good have a good day. Um, enjoy the rest of the week. I'll be back when I'm back. And um, take care, have fun, and see you very soon. Bye for now.